In Xianwu Cave, the fire made of branches was still burning. The sound of crackling was particularly loud in the cave, and every sound exploded in Lan Wangji's heart. The flames danced slightly, casting huge shadows on the stone wall of the cave. It seems to be swaying in the wind, which is a metaphor for some kind of wobbling. Lan Wangji stared at the fire as if trying to solve some difficult puzzle. The fire was dim, and his eyes could not be seen clearly. He stirred the fire with a branch, bringing out a string of tiny sparks. The fire burned even more vigorously, almost reaching the apex of his heart. Wei Wuxian's breathing had calmed down. Lan Wangji finally turned his gaze slightly, allowing himself to boldly keep his gaze on that person. In the end, his wish came true, and he was greedy for a moment of joy. Wei Ying The thin lips parted slightly. His voice was muffled and restrained. His voice was trembling, not like calling someone, but more like an unconscious murmur from a midnight dream. Lan Wangji's eyes reflected the figure of a person not far away, from the beginning to the end, the only person caught his eyes. Lan Wangji clenched his hands in his sleeves unconsciously and took a deep breath as if calling these two words could draw some kind of strength from him. Wei Wuxian probably felt uncomfortable while sleeping. He unconsciously babbled a few times in his sleep and moved his body. It was probably because the movement was too large, which involved the wound, and his brows slightly frowned. Lan Wangji got up and sat beside him. Gently lifting Wei Wuxian's head, he rested it on his lap. Wei Wuxian also noticed this softness in his sleep, and his brows gradually relaxed. Lan Wangji looked at Wei Wuxian's sleeping face closely, looking at his tightly closed eyes, his slightly trembling eyelashes, his sickly flushed cheeks due to fever, and his pale lips, listening to his breathing and his sleep talk. Lan Wangji touched his forehead, which was still hot and then he wiped off Wei Wuxian's cold sweat. He hated Wei Wuxian for not understanding the difference between closeness and distance and hated that he could be so nice to anyone that he would risk his life. He also felt lucky that Wei Wuxian didn't understand the difference between closeness and distance, otherwise, Lan Wangji himself should have been the kind of person who was alienated from the beginning, right? Lan Wangji grew up in the Lan family of Gusu and lived the dignified appearance that everyone expected. He never knew that there is another way to live life. And that person is novel, unknown. That person's every move became the most anticipated accident in Lan Wangji's ordinary life. He remembered Wei Wuxian's answer in the school that he was reprimanded for disregarding human rules, the fourth way he never thought of, he remembered Wei Wuxian teased him over and over again. After teasing him, he just laughed happily and ran away. He remembered them all. Lan Wangji felt that Wei Wuxian was the biggest vortex in the world, and he just took a look at it before sinking into it, unable to move away from it. It's so quiet here. It was so quiet that Lan Wangji could hear his frantic heartbeat and sense the clamoring longing in his heart. Wei Ying. His voice was warm, determined, and eager. Meeting Wei Wuxian, all of Lan Wangji's restraint and self-discipline collapsed. He wants to kiss him. He wants to bite him. He wants to put his stamp on him. Lan Wangji's eyes fell on Wei Wuxian's arm, which he had just bitten. The bite was deep, and although there were no wounds, there were still obvious marks. He stroked this mark lightly, hating that it could not be like Wen Sun Pattern Brand, which could be carried by that person for a lifetime. Lifetime Lan Wangji can always easily associate Wei Wuxian with the word lifetime. For example, in this situation, if next second the cave collapsed, burying both of them, they will be here for the rest of their lives. It seems that he will not be particularly unwilling. Maybe he would think about his elder brother, his father, his uncle, and his clansmen, but as far as he was concerned, he felt that he had no regrets. He looked deeply at the sleeping man, finally couldn't help it, bent down, and touched the man's lips like a dragonfly. Wei Wuxian said suddenly, Come on, Lan Zhan, I'll carry you. Lan Wangji was startled at first, then his whole body went stiff. After confirming that the person was just talking in his sleep, he was relieved and laughed softly like a child who stole candy. Wei Ying His voice was joyful and content. In a daze, 
Wei Wuxian seemed to hear someone calling his name eagerly, and the ending sound was like a small hook, which made Wei Wuxian's heart tickle and crisp. He was a little happy, rolling around, and felt something soft underneath his head. There was a cool touch on his forehead as if a hand was gently covering him, cooling him down and protecting him. His whole body was hot, and he yearned for the slight coolness, so he subconsciously rubbed upwards. He was rubbing and rolling. Suddenly his head dropped from Lan Wangji's lap, and it was cold and hard again, so Wei Wuxian muttered dissatisfied. Still not behaved even in sleep. Lan Wangji shook his head gently, saying in a very low voice. The heat from Lan Wangji's breath hit Wei Wuxian's ears. His ears felt a little numb. The touch was too sensitive, and it spread to all the limbs along with the bone marrow, and he subconsciously shrank back. It seemed that someone touched his head with a very light force as if to comfort him, and then he was hugged back to the soft place like someone's legs. He thought about it in a trance and felt that there were not many people calling his name, and the voice was very familiar. Before Wei Wuxian could think about it deeply, sleepiness swept over again. Inside the Xian Wu cave, the flames remained. Lan Wangji quietly looked at the person who was pillowed on his lap, the side of his face was hid by light and shadow, making him look warm and gentle. Everything was as beautiful as a painting.